Welcome to GERO Mathematics and Statistics Lessons. Thank you for your subscriptions to the channel. Thank you for your likes and your comments on our videos. Thank you for your shares of our videos. We are so grateful. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do that now by clicking the subscription button below and make sure you turn on your notification button. We are so grateful. Now, in our first video on probability, our first lesson on probability, we answered the question, what is the probability of an event? And we did that from an empirical perspective. We also gave some general definitions to the probability of an event. In our second lesson on probability, we answered the question, what is the probability of an event from a perspective that we call the set theoretic perspective. So we give a set theoretic definition to the probability of an event. In this video, we want to show you that the probability of any event from a random experiment must lie between zero and one. Of course, by this inequality, clearly you see, you can see that the probability of an event can be one, it can be zero, but can never be greater than one, neither can it be less than zero, but can lie between zero and one with zero and one being possibilities for the probability, okay? So, that is what we want to do. Now, let us quickly recall certain concepts from set theory. In our discussion on set theory, we had talked about a null set. A null set in set theory was uh, defined to be the set containing no element. So any set that contains no element is a null set. And of course, the cardinality of a null set is zero since it contains no element. We also defined the universal set to be the largest set under consideration, okay? So the universal set was defined to be the largest set under consideration. Now, the null set, we, we shall use the idea of null set in this video. We shall also use the idea of the universal set in this video. So let us begin with showing you how this is true, okay? Now, um, let's start with saying, let E, let E be an event space. Let E be an event space from a sample space, S, okay? So let E be an event space from a sample space, S. Clearly, what follows from this statement is that E is clearly a subset of S. This is true, of course, from set theory. If E is an event space, remember our discussion or our definition of an event space that event spaces are subsets of sample spaces. So, if E is, the, is an event space selected or drawn from a sample space S, then this relationship holds. It means that E is clearly a subset of S. Now, recall, recall from set theory, recall from set theory, that um, the empty set, the empty set denoted with phi is always a subset of any set. So if you recall that the empty set is always a subset of any set, then the next statement I'm going to make here is true. So if that is true, that the empty set is always a subset of any set, then it means that the empty set is a subset of E. So in the event space lies the empty set. So this relationship, I'm going to call equation one. This relationship I'm going to call equation two. Now, if you combine equation one and equation two, so combining one and two, Combining equation 1 and 2 gives that the empty set is a subset of the event space and the event space in turn is a subset of S. So this is true. Now, so the first relationship is that the subset or the event space is a subset of the sample space. Of course, this is true from our definition in the last uh, um, class on probability. Now, the empty set from set theory is also a set that is found in any set or every set. So, the empty set is a subset clearly of the event space. And I'm calling that equation, equation 2. Now, if you combine equation 1 and 2, it will give us this relationship that the empty set is a subset of the event space, which in turn is a subset of the sample space. Remember, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes from a random experiment. 
So that is true. Now, if we change this to an inequality, then we, it means that we, we are considering the following. If this is the empty set, if phi is the empty set, then clearly the cardinality of the empty set is zero from set theory. So a set that contains no element clearly has a cardinality of zero. So this is true. Now, we could also represent the cardinality of E as this. Okay? So the cardinality of the event space we can represent as this, telling us the number of elements in the event space. Now, also, the cardinality of the sample space we can write as this. And this tells us or defines the number of elements in the sample space. Now, if we borrow these assumptions or these particular statements, then from equation 3, we can develop an inequality for these cardinalities that if the empty set is a subset of the event space and the event space in turn is a subset of the sample space, it means that the cardinality of the, the, the empty set is less than or equal to the cardinality. Take note, this changes immediately I started talking about the cardinality, the number of elements in this set. It changed the notation from subsets to inequalities. So if the empty set is a subset of E and E is a subset in turn of S, then it means the, the cardinality of the empty set is clearly less than or equal to the cardinality of the event space, which in turn is less than or equal to the cardinality of the sample space. So I'm going to call this equation 4. Now, dividing equation 4, dividing equation 4, dividing equation 4 by ns that is the cardinality of the the um the sample space if you divide this inequality i'm calling equation four by the cardinality of the sample space then you would end up having this so what are we going to have it means we are going to divide each statement in that equation by ns the cardinality of the sample space now doing that means n um phi that's the cardinality of the sum the the empty set will be divided by s n s this the cardinality of the event space will be divided by n s and the cardinality of n s will be divided by n s okay and that brings about this now n phi is equal to zero and that means this will reduce to since n phi is equal to zero this will reduce to 0 all over ns. And that will be less than or equal to ne all over ns. And that will be less than or equal to ns all over ns. Now, take note, ns divides itself and that results in 1. So, if you divide ns by itself, you, you will end up getting 1. Now, this is ne all over ns. Okay? So, 0 divided by ns gives you 0 because 0 divided by anything gives you 0. Okay? So, you now end up having that 0 is less than or equal to ne all over ns, which in turn is less than or equal to 1. But, from the set theoretic definition, from the set theoretic definition of probability, the probability of an event we had earlier discussed in our first video, but from the set theoretic definition, of the probability of an event E. PRE was defined as the cardinality of the event space all over the cardinality of the sample space. This implies that zero is less than or equal to Instead of putting NE all over NS, we will replace that with probability of the event because this ratio defines the probability of an event going by the set theoretic definition. So this is now replaced with the probability of an event and this is less than or equal to 1. And the proof is complete. So that shows you that the probability of an event must lie between 0 and 1 with 0 and 1 being possibilities for the probability but can never be greater than 1, it can never be less than 0. Thank you very much for watching this video. Do stay tuned.
Thank you very much.